Today, this council provided a glimmer of hope amongst a sea of unimaginable suffering. Today, this council called for urgent steps to immediately allow safe, unhindered, and expanded humanitarian access and to create the conditions for a sustainable cessation of hostilities. I'll note that this is the first time this council has used this language, language we believe is critical to scaling up aid and underscoring the tough steps ahead as we work together to achieve a lasting peace. Colleagues, today this council made clear that addressing the humanitarian crisis in Gaza needs to remain at the forefront of our agenda. Today this council made clear that all hostages must be released immediately and unconditionally and that humanitarian groups must be able to access hostages, including for medical visits. Today this council made clear that all parties must respect international humanitarian law. Today this council made clear that civilian and humanitarian facilities, including hospitals, medical facilities, schools, places of worship, and UN facilities, as well as humanitarian personnel and medical personnel must be protected. And I'll note that the resolution does not support any steps that would leave Hamas in power, which in turn would undermine the prospects for a two-state solution, where Gaza and the West Bank are re reunited under a single governance structure, under a revamped and revitalized Palestinian authority. We must, colleagues, we must work towards a future where Israelis and Palestinians live side by side in peace. This is the only way forward. Ultimately, while we are encouraged that the Council spoke out on this humanitarian crisis, we're deeply disappointed, appalled actually, that once again the Council was not able to condemn Hamas's horrific terrorist attack on October 7th. And I can't understand why some Council members are standing in the way and why they refuse to condemn these evils unequivocally. Why is it so hard to condemn Hamas for slaughtering young people at a concert, for burning families alive, for the reports of widespread sexual violence? Why? I will never understand why some council members have remained silent in the face of such evil. But colleagues, we also believe this council must continue to put its support behind the resumption of humanitarian pauses. Israel has made clear that it's committed to reaching another agreement. This is now entirely up to Hamas. Hamas must agree to additional pauses. That is how we can get additional aid in and save lives and additional hostages out immediately. Today this council spoke out, but we know that only progress on the ground can turn these words into action. So the United States will continue to work with the UN, with humanitarian groups and countries in the region to get more humanitarian aid into Gaza, to secure the release of hostages and to work towards a lasting peace. There are over two million Palestinians in desperate need of such aid on the Palestinian side. This inhumane and criminal Israeli siege, this use of humanitarian aid necessary for the survival of the population as method of war has to end, and it has to end now. Mr. President, on 4th of November, the deputy head of the Israeli civil administration stated from inside Gaza, and I quote, Whoever, return, whoever returns here, if they return here after, will find scorched earth, no houses, no agriculture, no nothing. 
they have no future. End of quotation. This is just one statement among far too many, demonstrating in shocking terms that what we are dealing with is an attempt at the destruction of our people and their displacement forever from their land. This is Israeli's goal, its true objective. No future for Palestinians in Palestine. That is why it is bombing everyone and everything. That is why it targets homes, hospitals, schools, bakeries, agricultural fields, water and sanitation networks, so that sustenance of life becomes impossible, and it has become impossible. Just a week ago, Jaysh al-Adil carried out a terror attack in Iran in which 11 Iranian police officers were killed. Within one day, the Security Council released a statement condemning the act of terror. It took the Security Council one day to express their condolences and sympathy with the families of the victims. It's true, terrorism must be condemned even if the attacks are perpetrated against police officers of a rogue regime and the world's leading sponsor of global terror. Mr. President, 77 days ago, Hamas intentionally murdered, raped, and mutilated 1,300 Israelis and took 250 hostages. And this council still has yet to issue a single statement condemning Hamas and their atrocities.